Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is an amazing analogy for so many different areas of life. In today's video, probably the start of a new series, we're going to be breaking down one of those areas. And that area just so happens to be the video game Clash Royale. I am going to explain why it's a good analogy for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and vice versa, how they can be seen through the lens of each other. You may be asking, why is this something that is even worth considering? For me, there are three reasons. First, just because it's fun, it's interesting, it's something to talk about related to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, this hobby that I do practice and love. Number two, strictly for your own personal learning, the more ways you are able to connect a concept or idea in your brain, the better you're going to be able to understand it. Now, this can be seen pretty clearly if someone has done another martial art, say boxing or striking or, or whatever, and the instructor is able to relate to them in a way that they're familiar with. For example, in boxing, you might put your shoulder like this when you throw a punch. So if someone says boxing shoulder, you know that it means to roll your shoulder like this, and it allows you to learn it quicker. So the third reason is from the coaching perspective. Obviously, from the learner's perspective, the more ways you can integrate things and connect them to each other, the quicker you're going to be able to learn them. This will come into play, especially with strategy, as you'll find out later in the video. But as a coach, the more ways I can relate to my students, the more tools I have in my tool belt for getting them to understand things, to pay attention, especially when it comes to kids' classes. If you're trying to talk that head off to children about body mechanics, this, bend this way, that, choke, like, sometimes you can get them. But oftentimes their attention will start to wander and obviously you just gotta let them play around with the techniques and have fun with it, that's what really gets them engaged. But when you have to talk to them, if you're able to relate to them in a way that they can understand, for example, one time I used Pokemon as a great analogy for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. By the way, if this video gets 20 likes, the next one won't have as much rambling. It'll be about why Pokemon can be seen through the lens of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Let's get right into Clash Royale though. In what ways can Clash Royale be seen through the lens of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? So the biggest one, in my opinion, is the elixir versus the energy you expend in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. For me, this is one of the most important concepts that I think about when I'm rolling or sparring or teaching or practicing, and that's energy conservation. If you are able to be using less energy than your opponent, say you're able to use 20% of your maximum heart rate, and your opponent's using 30 or 40% of their maximum heart rate, well, they're going to get significantly more tired than you significantly faster. And when someone's tired, it doesn't matter if their defense or their offense is amazing. If they have no energy to use their moves, then they're not going to be able to do them, and you'll win because you'll have more energy than them, and they'll be exhausted. When it comes to Clash Royale, there is a feature in the game called Elixir, and it slowly builds up over time at a constant rate. It'll replenish, but it maxes out at 10. You can't get any can use your elixir to play different cards. And if you're able to do positive elixir trades, which means you place down something worth three or four elixir, and it beats something that's worth six, seven, or more elixir, that will allow you to win the game. And in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, if you're able to do a move at a very low energy output, say you're super efficient at doing a sweep, and it takes almost no energy to get the person over, but they were defending it super hard and cost them a lot of energy, well, that is how you win matches. And in Clash Royale, one massive positive elixir trade can easily decide the entire game, especially because they're only three minutes. And if you're competing in a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament, one good or bad position can easily be the decider, A by points or B by submission. For example, if I put somebody in a super devastating energy draining position like Neon Belly or Mount, that's the equivalent of placing a card that just constantly drains their energy again and again and again. And over time, those will compound, those will add up, and the person who has used the least amount of energy with the most effect is going to be the one who comes out on top. This comes into another aspect of the game, the individual moves, and then later the full game plan and play style. When it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's so many different moves. There's way more moves than there are cards in Clash Royale, but every single time you do a move, it's going to cost a certain amount of energy, or elixir. For example, a double leg takedown might cost a huge amount of energy and commitment, and if you kind of half do it, you might end up sprawled on or in a bad position or guillotined or very 
unfortunate. However, if you're able to fully commit and really hit a nice double leg takedown, the result can be completely devastating. You can pick your opponent off their legs and you dump them into the mat, then they can have like a super massive energy deficit and you're in a good position. Likewise, in Clash Royale, there are certain cards that cost a high amount of elixir. And if while someone is placing a high elixir card, they're not able to protect themselves or they can't commit to the one lane or wherever they're going, they can be completely destroyed by someone who's able to counter that. Let's do this. However, if you're able to fully commit or fully get it going, then oftentimes you'll come out victorious. How much you commit to your moves or how much you commit to your cards is going to determine whether or not they're successful. And if you're using a high commitment move, you're really going to have to commit for it to be super effective. Versus if you're using a low commitment move, like an arm drag or like a post or something that doesn't take a lot of energy and it's really hard to do a devastating counter, then it's no big deal, but you're probably not going to land a slam double leg into the mat with just a simple post. And you're probably not going to destroy your opponent's tower in Clash Royale if you place like a two or three elixir card. It's just going to get, you know, wished away. Then this is play. The next thing is how your card choice or your move choice in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu plays into your overall strategy for the game at large. If you pick moves in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that are extremely low commitment in relation to energy expenditure, maybe you really like to play out of the guard. So you're not going to be focusing your time and energy on double leg takedowns and your overall strategy and pacing for the game is going to have to be different. If you pick a wrestling style game where you really like to do smash pass, get on top, take him down, stay on top, that's going to be a slightly faster paced game and you're going to have to come at it with a different strategy and different style. And if you specialize in a specific game, you'll get better at that. If you pick specific cards, it's going to determine the way you're able to play the game. If you play a siege deck, that's the kind of deck I play, you're going to have a very particular strategy. Versus if you play a trickery deck where you try to get them to play some certain counters and then punish them for not doing it, that might be a faster paced game than if you're playing a tank deck where you're really trying to build up elixir for one massive push that sweeps everybody out. The cards that you pick or the moves in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that you specialize into are going to determine your overall play style and the way that you're able to articulate your expression of the game, both in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and in Clash Royale. So the deck that I like to play is actually very, very similar to the way I play Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I'll explain why. So the deck that I like to play is a mortar deck, which means it's one specific card and it's a siege style deck. So it's very frowned upon in the Clash Royale like subculture to play a siege deck because the traditional chivalrous, I suppose, way of playing is to play cards that are troop type cards and will go all the way over to your opponent's towers and attack your towers directly and then destroy them that way and you win by getting more overwhelming cards. My strategy doesn't involve playing by the rule, I mean it is playing by the rules, but doesn't involve playing by the traditional rules at all. I drop a single card, well, obviously combinations of cards going to be more effective, but the mortar is going to slowly tick away at their tower. Tick, tick, tick. And when I'm doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm always trying to suck away their energy. I'm trying to do things that put additional weight on them, that make them have to fight a little bit harder, that have to come up for air and do a bunch of things that take energy as I'm just sitting there playing another move, dropping another card, throwing another attack. And the whole time, I have a few kill cards in my pocket. So obviously, I can win if I just do not give up. I'll push the match three minutes. Slowly chipping away at your tower. Perfect defense. Tick, tick, tick. Three minutes on the clock. Slowly pressuring you. Tick, tick, tick. Defend a submission. Defend an almost tower getting destroyed. Tick, tick, tick. You try to do a counterattack, it gets destroyed with a positive elixir trade. You try to escape, and you get punished by put, being put in Neon Belly or Kesa Gatami. Tick, tick, tick. Suddenly, someone does a massive escape to try to get out out of desperation because the clock's running out and they need to win. 
switch to an armbar or triangle and you instantly win. Or in Clash Royale, if someone tries to push hard or overcommits themselves, Elite Barbarians on the other side runs down the lane, destroys their tower in half a second, and they can't counter it because they've used up all their energy earlier in the match, or Elixir earlier in the match. And in much the same way that it's against the chivalrous code of Clash Royale to play a Siege style deck, people often think it's cheap or cheating. In Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I explicitly try not to follow certain unspoken rules of rolling. And I don't mean the ones where you're like, don't completely cross face the crap out of everybody just because you want to because it's fun. But I don't really care about submissions like a gas mask. To me, it's a technical move. You should be able to defend it by pulling the hand away. My favorite one is unspoken break time. And this is the unspoken rule that I break all the time in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And that's when you are rolling and there might be a break in the action. And this is the time to settle into position. I know this has happened to almost everybody who's done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because it's happened to me countless times. And if I've been good about keeping my energy, when the person is three, four, five, six exchanges deep, and they're ready to take a quick breather in whatever kind of guard position or whatever it may be, that's when you continue. That's when you push the gas. The energy that you've been saving is that's when I push the gas. And then it's I've had people get offended, but they can't articulate why they're offended. They're like, "You should have taken." They 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 don't know how to say. I thought we were supposed to take like an unspoken breather there, but you continue to advance even when I thought we were done. And that's kind of funny, just because I realize it's how I play Clash Royale. So I really liked explaining it in this way. If this video gets 20 likes, I'll make another one about why Pokemon can be seen through the lens of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you made it to the end, drink your kombucha. It's really good for you. Super healthy. My favorite drink. Don't have tummy problems like Gordon Ryan. Peace.